I find this fascinating. I want to juxtapose two stories that are in the news right now and hopefully get you thinking a little and maybe talk it and maybe we could ultimately even see some interesting change in the United States. Now, on the one hand, one of the two stories is about Ferguson. The Department of Justice has found that uh, the, the Ferguson Police Department essentially decided that their primary goal, the, their job, was not to police the community. It was not to serve and protect. It was not to you know, defend the citizens. That their principal job was to raise money. This is what the Department of Justice found. That, these, the, that the largely white police department spoke of their largely black citizens in derisive terms. They made jokes about Obama. You know, he's not going to be more than a you know, the one-term president because black, pe- black men can't hold a job for more than four years. blah de blah blah I mean, it's just, it was horrible. It's a freak show. And the, the city had, in one year, had raised over $2 million just from ticketing people. Every black person in Ferguson knew that if they got in their car or even walked down the street in the wrong way, no, seriously, in Ferguson, walking down the street the wrong way, which is apparently what Michael Brown was doing, by the way. Officer Darren Wilson did not know that Brown at that point in time was a suspect in a robbery. He stopped him because he was walking in the street on a street that has no sidewalks. In Ferguson. And walking in the street is illegal, and you can get a ticket. The city built $2 million worth of billing in a year from a largely poor African American, working poor African American community of just, you know, 20, 30,000 people. I mean, it's just, they're just extracting money from people like there's no tomorrow. On the TV show last night, we had a guest on. Uh, Goldie, I'm forgetting her last name. Taylor? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Goldie Taylor, who who talked about how, you know, in black communities all over America, everybody knows, hey, if you get in your car, if you've got the smallest thing wrong, I mean, if there's a piece of mud over your license plate that obscures a number, if you've got a dead taillight, if you've got a dead bulb over your your license plate, Anything that might be wrong with your car, or if you're not wearing your seatbelt or whatever, you will get nailed. And I said to her, and she said, you know, I'm in my 40s, and it's been this way my whole life. And I said to her, well, I'm, you know, a bit older than that, and I don't remember this. And then it suddenly hit me. I don't remember it because I'm white, and I grew up in middle-class communities. I mean, I grew up in the, in the southern side, on the south end of uh, Lansing, Michigan. It was a solidly blue-collar, working-class neighborhood. My, my dad bought the house that we lived in in 1956 for $13,000. It was a three-bedroom, one bath. And it was me and dad and mom and my three younger brothers, six of us. But it was, you know, it was a white neighborhood. So when the police came through, you know, we didn't run, we didn't freak out, we didn't worry. I just never had that experience. We lived in Vermont, and I remember there was one spot on on Highway uh, 14, as I recall. Maybe it was 41, whatever the whatever the 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 main highway was there that ran through Montpelier, Route 12, whatever. Anyhow, we knew everybody knew where the speed trap was, right? Just like in a lot of towns, you know, everybody knows where the speed trap is. So it's not like they are preying on members of the community. They're, they're there to nail tourists, which, you know, in a state like Vermont, where tourism is a major part of it, that makes a certain amount of sense. And they're not doing it based on, you know, racial criteria. But in Ferguson, they were nailing the citizens of the town that they were raising the money for. Okay, so, so that's story one. I said I want to juxtapose two stories. That's story one. We got a problem. We're funding our police departments with fines from speeding tickets and whatnot, running red lights, and, and we are targeting minorities in poor areas in order to fund these police departments. Now, pop on across the pond over to Finland. 
In Finland, a fellow by the name of Rima Kisla is a businessman was driving down the street in a uh, in a 50 mile an hour zone 80 kilometers per hour 50 miles an hour and he was going 64 miles an hour he's going 14 miles over he gets pulled over he gets a ticket when the city or when the country whatever the jurisdiction was looks up Rima Kisla's income they discover that this guy based on his you know last year's income had a salary uh, in the neighborhood of 10 million dollars so the fine that they hit him with for his speeding ticket was sixty thousand dollars figuring that a guy who makes 10 million dollars a year for him, a $60,000 fine for speeding is about the same as somebody who makes fifty dollars or $60,000 a year getting a $50 ticket for speeding. See, in Finland, the ticket is a function of how wealthy you are. Now, consider how this would change the profile of the people that police are looking to stop in Ferguson. If they knew that if they stopped rich white guys... They could, they could, you know, instead of the ticket being a $50 ticket, it could be a $5,000 ticket. Hey, you stop, you stop, uh, you know, uh, David Koch, I mean, the ticket could be $10 million. All right, these guys made a, well over a billion dollars last year, each of them. Is it time for us, in fact, the, the most famous back in 2002, there was a Nokia executive in Finland who made 14 million euros, and he was hit with a 116,000 euro fine. This is, he got about a $125,000 speeding ticket because he made $16 million a year. Good idea? I think so. What do you think? This is the Tom Hartman Program. Should we start basing...